H fans, people into webs, it's me, Salve SG1, back for another uh, Star Trek, the official Starships collection. Um, we are doing issue number 143, Merchant Man, as seen in Star Trek 3, Search for Spock. And as usual, a nice glossy magazine, and the ship itself, but more on that later. Um, so we've got a specification, operated by Independent, so not aligned. Um, Type for in operation 23rd century length, 150 meters, crew three, um, max speed warp five, weaponary, fa weaponary, weaponary phases, even though we don't see them used. Uh, oh, a different fucking image there. We've got a sun, We've got a star. Nice under under um, shot there. Beautiful. Must have listened to me. Uh, the female Klingon operative Valkyris detected, directed the captain of the helmsman of the uh, merchant man uh, to prearrange meeting point of Commander Krug's bed of prey. She had hired a rogue crew to steal data regarding the Genesis device, but instead of being paid for their efforts, they were rewarded with a volley of disruptor fire. Fucking hell, spoilers. <laughs> The Genesis device was a torpedo shaped projectile that could potentially turn a lifeless planet into a thriving class M planet in the wrong hands. However, it would be, be it could be a devastating weapon. And we got the topographical view there, very nice, very nice. Uh, the main the alien crewman of the merchant man was played by Tom Monger. Morga. Uh, he was a stunt man and he holds the record of being the most seen stunt man in Star Trek. Appearing in six films and four TV series. Ah, oh, cool. The Merchant Man appeared in a civilian ship from Earth. Other similar vessels in the 23rd century included the Aurora, the Wolfen class, Transport, and Solea, and Stella the Harry Mudd ship. It was written in the script that the Star Trek theme said for Spot the Merchant Man wanted waited for cruises somewhere in the Organian, Organian space. Although this fact was left out in the movie, the Organians were powerful non-corporeal beings seen in the original series episode, Errand of Mercy. And then we've got design in the Merchant Man, and we've got some different designs there, which is pretty much what we got, really. Um, sort of different sort of look to it there. And it would... The studio model of Merchant Man, which was made of styrene and cast resin, was redressed several times with various episodes of Star Trek. First appearance Next Generation episode, The Outrageous O'Connor. Among other outings, it was depicted as the Bocknor. Um, in Deep Space Nine episode, uh, The Maquis Part 1. Good episode. Then we've got the visual effects for Star Trek 3. Um, we've got the. That's, I believe that is a, um, a prom promo shot. Um, and then we've got you know, Earth Space Dock, which we have now, which we have now. Um, some other designs that could have been Space Dock. Which a lot of these designs ended up in the Quail R2 um, base. And then we've got um, the building of the model of Space Dock there. And we've got the interior of it. Um, building the Bear of Prey and the um, weird alien creatures. And the oh yeah, and the destruction of the Enterprise, which is still to this day is really hurts me. Um, it's such a horrible. It, it, it's the way it explodes is so horrible that like the name and register all melts away, and that it's it's, uh, it's a really cool effect though. Now oh, you can see melting it there. Look. Um, basically, it was made of um, styrene and the, and the dripping um, stuff on it to make it melt, which is really cool, like acid or something. It's really cool. Acetone. Yeah, which destroys plastic. And then we've got some more um, visual effects there as well. And we've got Bear of Prayer flying off there. And then we've got on screen Star Trek 3. Uh, designed by Nilo Rodis. Rodis? I'm, I'm probably saying that wrong. Canadian actress Kath, uh, K Katrine Sheriff played Valkyrie, the Klingon operative who hired the merchant man and made the first actress to portray a female Klingon character, allowing the race's updated look for the movies. According to the interview gave the Twilight Zone magazine, shortly after filming, she was the first actress to prosper the role. 
has heard that Glenda Jackson was offered the part but passed due to scheduling reasons. Yeah, because the first female Klingon is, uh, um, uh, what do they call him? Kang's wife? Is it? Mm, I can't remember. Grace Lee Whitney, who played Yeoman Janice Rand in the original series, had a cameo appearance in Star Trek Research Book. Um, she portrayed an unnamed commander viewing lounge of Space Dock and will witness the damage US Enterprise 1701 returning. Space Dock was imagined to be the ground around three miles long. In fact, the model was actually six feet long, which would still impress if Space Dock could be go on to appear in three films and footage of it was used four times in Next Generation with Enterprise D instead of instead of uh, where Kirk's ship would have been. And there we go, Metro Man. All done and dusted onto the ship. Now this is why I collect this line, because the Merchant Man is a really cool ship. Um, you'll you'll you never have we had this ship in any um, uh, Hot Wheels or Johnny Lightning or anything like that. We've never had the Merchant Man, um, and it's really cool. I like the engines there. They've got like a thin um, clear part over the engines there. Looks pretty cool. It sort of catches the light. It's really nice. You got some really nice detail all over here. Look, all this detail, it's fantastic. Um, and then you got the detail underneath there. You got all these pipes and stuff like that, and conduits and stuff. Just looks fantastic. And you got this like lower sp spike, uh, lower fin down on the bottom here, which you know would serve no purpose unless it doubles as a deflector dish, maybe. Um, but yeah, this ship was used as the Shellyak ship, the uh, Vidian scout ship. Cardassian ship Bucknell, because it does look vaguely Cardassian, to be honest, that sort of shape. Um, and freighters and transports here and there, all over. But, you know, it just shows you that a good design's a good design, and we'll throw on a few extra bits and pieces here and there. And there it is, Merchantman. Um, yeah, it's really fucking cool. The detail on it is just amazing. Like, like it just seems like... The alien ships in this line are the better ones, but the Federation ship seems to be a bit lacking, particularly hero ships, you know? Um, Voyager, uh, Enterprise C, still a massive bugbear, man. Um, but yeah, really cool, really, really nice. Um, and should you get this? Yes, you fucking should. You should put this in your movie. If you're doing, I know people doing like buy series and movies. This would fit in your movie uh, universe very nicely there. Um, but no, it's just it's just really nice, really, really, really nice. I like the sort of purpley brown colour it's got going on. Um, sort of almost like two tone. You can sort of see it changing colours almost. And you got some really nice detail in the back there. Um, and you know what? This would wouldn't be out of place in Star Wars, um, with the you know with the extra bits added onto there, and you know what I mean. Um, this would look very uh, at home in the galaxy far, far away. You know, like a merchant ship and stuff like that. Well, it is a merchant ship, but you know, I wouldn't have noticed them before. It's got like little uh, forward um, thrusters at the front there. Um, yeah, very fucking cool. Very nice. Yes, you should get it. Um, I like these um, sort of spines coming off there. I'm not sure what even the what does it say in the magazine what they are. If it says anything, let's have a look. I'm not entirely sure. Sensor and communications are rare. I thought as much. Um, yeah, I thought as much. So yeah, so they've got sensors and communications arrays on there, and you've got the cargo hold at the back here, uh, the main bridge at the front there. Uh, very nice. Very, very, very cool indeed. Um, like I say, you should get this. Um, it does fit on the stand very nicely indeed. You just do it like... Oh, wait a minute. It says, um, just Merchant Man on the bottom there. And we connect it thus. And it is a bit dusty because I've had it a couple of weeks. <laughs> ah! Fuck. Oh, it seems to be all right. Yeah, so, <laughs> there you go. There's, one, there's my one pair list. Um, there you go, Nils, I'm sure you'll like that. But yeah, there it is, uh, on the stand. Very nice. Yeah, it is a little bit loose, um, if I'm honest. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little bit loose on there. But it stays on there okay if you're not moving it. Um, so that's me. That's the uh, Merchant Man. Um, so... 
if you like what I do and you'd like to see more, um, why not consider donating to my Patreon? You can have your name in the credits and and vote on videos and stuff like that and what I'm going to do in the future. You can have a little say and I'll have some um, cool rewards set up as well. Um, but nobody's nobody's done it yet, so I haven't done it yet. <laughs> so if you'd like to be the first, you can have your name in the credits. It'd be, be pretty cool. Um, check out my playlist here, um, all different Star Trek reviews and stuff like that, uh, but check out my Transformers reviews as well, and um, give this give this video a big fucking thumbs up, helps my channel out, helps shows that um, YouTube that people watch my videos, and, um, and if you like what I do, consider subscribing and hit that notification bell, tell you when I've got new videos out. So thanks for watching, and I will catch you all very, very, very soon. Adios.